August has blessed us with an amazing array of indie games, including the highly contentious No Man's Sky. We'll be covering it all for you, but before we do, let's get some headlines and honourable mentions. After breaking ties with Sony in March, Tequila Works have confirmed that their upcoming adventure game Rhyme will now be multi-platform. They've also announced a new creepy puzzle game called The Sexy Brutal, which will be playable next year. A new trailer and a 2016 release date have been shown off for political thriller Orwell. The 1984-inspired title that's all about terrorism and surveillance is being made by just a three-man studio. Lastly, in some unfortunate news, Capybara's long-awaited Below has been delayed indefinitely. Grow Up is the sequel to Grow Home. It takes the high-flying platforming formula of the original and builds on it with new gadgets and a bigger world to explore. Grow Up is casual single-player fun at its finest. In Versus is a territorial battle for up to four players that can be played competitively and cooperatively, as well as locally and online. We love how the shape of the board adds strategic complexity to the simple mechanics, as well as the sharp colour scheme. Death Road to Canada is an irreverent road romp through a zombie apocalypse. In every randomised playthrough, you'll have a chance to teach a dog to drive, recruit a weeaboo to your squad, and of course, fight a lot of zombies. In Heart and Slash, you lead the little robot Heart in a series of brawls against his heartless brothers. The combat is as smooth as it is fast, and the soundtrack captures that same frenetic energy. If you liked Fury from last month, then this one is for you. Bound is a PS4 only platformer in which you guide an elegant dancer through a fragile environment embedded with metaphor. Watching the woman and the world dance with one another is always stunning and at times extremely profound. In the end, unlucky not to make this month's top 5. The casual cooking game genre has a reputation as a factory that pumps out a gluttony of mediocre mobile games. Overcooked, however, completely shuns that label and serves up a deliciously fresh local co-op game. Obviously, the game is about cooking, but with the constant threat of some apocalyptic disaster in the backdrop, things are never mundane. Ordering your pudgy chefs about the kitchen to make food is simple, but doing so on a ship where the waves send your crew flying turns it into pure chaos. It makes the game unpredictably fun, which only plays out to even greater effect when playing with friends. Overcooked is a terrific party game that also gives cooking games a good name. I've seen things. A few things before. Left the sun and with its infinite generation of unique planets, No Man's Sky is a technical marvel. At first, this delivers an unparalleled sense of wonderment as you discover creatures and worlds that no one else has. But soon, what was once new becomes old, and what was wonderful becomes ordinary. It is in this moment you realise that beneath all the randomization, there is not a lot of meaning in No Man's Sky. Nothing for you to hold on to. No Man's Sky is the game we warned it would be in our January video, why No Man's Sky won't live up to the hype. In it, we argued that amidst all the excitement for the game, fans had lost sight of what the game actually was. No Man's Sky is not a game that you play with others, or a game with narrative driven objectives from which you can draw purpose. It is simply randomization on an unprecedented scale. And that's not something we should undersell either. The existence of No Man's Sky itself is incredible. It's an experience like no other, and some will really enjoy that. But it is not, and we never thought it could be, the kind of game that would appeal to the masses. Now that it's released, it seems that is what has unfolded. And that's okay. Not every game is meant to be enjoyed by everyone. All we can say is, make sure your expectations are fueled by information, not hype.
We didn't feature Duelist when it released in April, but since it released on Steam in August, we thought it was the perfect time to redeem ourselves. We actually first featured Duelist as a Kickstarter project way back in March 2014 in what was our first ever Top 5 video. We were impressed back then, and now with the final product out, our appreciation has gone to another level. The game itself is a head-to-head -head turn based card game much in the vein of Hearthstone. It's free to play, has astonishingly beautiful art assets, quick 5-10 to 10 minute games, and is filled to the brim with clever strategy options. There are two things that really make it stand out in the burgeoning digital card game genre. First off, winning isn't dependent on what cards you have, with the game rewarding skill and not disadvantaging new players. And secondly, it's not pay to win. With games not determined by the contents of your deck, you don't have to buy your way to competitiveness. Duelist is a terrific strategy game that we're sure will be sticking around for a long time to come. The cop only a week out from retirement is the cliche film premise you've watched a million times, but one that you've never played before. In This Is The Police, you play as Freeburg Police Chief Jack Boyd. With 180 days until retirement, your goal is to make half a million dollars. At first, it seems how you earn the money is up to you, but what you'll ultimately find is that the corruptity of Freeburg is the real dictator of your actions. The game plays out kind of like a management sim, as you organise your staff, respond to emergencies and investigate crimes. It also deals a lot in situation management. You'll negotiate with the city's crime lords, handle yourself in presses, and survive trips to the witness box. What it results in is a game about managing a web of lives and weaving between the police world and the underworld. It's challenging and stressful, but rewarding and engaging at the same time. If we have any criticism, is that the ending feels a little lacklustre, but overall, This Is The Police is a cracker. Abzu is absolutely gorgeous. And if you think its art looks familiar, that's because it does. This is the debut game of Giant Squid Studios and their director Matt Nava, the artist behind Journey. Clearly, Nava has infused the same beauty into Abzu, but that's not all the game borrows from Journey. It's fleeting in duration, has no words to communicate with, and there aren't any monsters to duel or coins to collect. It's almost exploration for exploration's sake, but what makes it so compelling is its level of immersion. The wonderful wildlife acts so naturally and the ecosystem feels genuinely alive. The narrative is so hidden and off to the side that you feel genuine discovery when you uncover it. And not only do the visuals grab you, but the music carries you through the currents. It's a sensational atmosphere, a portal to another world that is all your own. The perfect relaxation game. Thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.